The fact that the mystery of Amelia Earhart's disappearance may be close to being solved is pretty incredible. This has been known as one of the biggest mysteries in aviation history. And we have some more info from this recent news story, as well as more theories as to what may have happened. So let's jump right in. So seeing as the biggest news regarding Amelia Earhart right now is the sonar image that may possibly be her plane, I wanted to give an update on that news story because this would be absolutely huge if it really does turn out to be her aircraft and it's really looking like it is. Now if you haven't heard the news yet, basically a sonar image was taken in the Pacific Ocean close to Howland Island that looks a lot like Earhart's Lockheed 10E Electra aircraft. Now I was hoping they'd have done a search of the area to actually go down there and capture images of the object, you know, see if it really is the plane, but these things take a bit more time than that. Obviously there's a lot of stuff that needs to be organized. However, an expedition is going to take place officially. Unfortunately though, it won't be till later this year at the earliest, so we gotta patiently wait, but it's looking like this mystery is pretty close to being solved. As for what would take place after confirming this is the plane, they wanna raise it to the surface and then restore it, but this whole process may take years to complete. If you are liking this channel so far, and you're relatively new, haven't subscribed yet, why not subscribe? It's totally free and we got awesome content coming your way on the daily. But that's gonna bring me to my next piece of news. We actually have a statement made by Tony Romeo, the CEO of Deep Sea Vision and former US Air Force intelligence officer. He gave more details about the possible plane and how it was found. Romeo led a 16 person team on this expedition back in September. It was a 90 day affair and they scanned 5,200 square miles of the ocean floor using an underwater drone to capture sonar data. Now there was a bit of dramatics here too because at one point, their hard drives got corrupted and they nearly lost the images that they took. Fortunately, they were able to retrieve them. And when they did and started going through to look at them, bam, they came across what looked like an aircraft on the ocean floor. Here's an image comparing the sonar image to the dimensions of Earhart's plane. Definitely it looks like they may have found it to me. Tony Romeo also contacted the Scripps Institute and the Smithsonian, who also believe there's a high probability that this is the plane. So what does it mean if this recent sonar image is indeed Earhart's plane? What exactly happened? Well, according to Tony Romeo, Earhart and her navigator Fred Noonan may have actually survived the initial landing as Earhart may not have crashed the plane, but landed it safely as possible on the water and then got out. This would mean they could have made it to land potentially and then other theories spring up as to what happened to them after that. So what Tony Romeo thinks is that Earhart's plane ran out of fuel and because of the weight dispersal of the aircraft it would have been pulled forward meaning they would have descended at a pretty steep incline so the wings on the Lockheed 10 are far forward on the craft and it also has two large engines right in the front so the center of gravity is very forward facing so they would have descended at a pretty steep incline Earhart would have tried to find the best possible way to glide onto the water rather than just nosedive into it and then the two would have gotten out of the plane as quickly as possible because it would have started sinking very fast again the center of gravity would have favored the plane dipping forward and like sinking basically vertically into the water next I want to talk about the possible condition of this plane again if they've really found it so first of all based on the sonar image it looks like whatever this thing is it's in one piece the bulk of it anyway so that really makes it seem like Earhart was able to at least land somewhat safely and what's really cool is because the thing is so deep underwater it'll likely be in very good condition as Tony Romeo stated at 16,000 feet where we found this the plane would likely be in very good shape and preserved well because of the temperatures the pH levels and the oxygen free level in the water so this is pretty big news and again it's looking like the mystery could be solved here but there's always the possibility that this is not Earhart's plane and in that case these next theories could also explain what happened. For example, the wormhole hypothesis. Yeah, that's quite the uh, contrast. Suddenly we're into wormholes. The idea here is that there are specific areas of our planet or areas that open up 
at random and act as wormholes. And if you're unfortunate enough to get hit with them, you get dragged in, never to be seen again. You'll hear this conspiracy theory come up sometimes when people vanish under very mysterious circumstances where there seems to be no clear explanation, like someone's out on a hike, totally in sight, and someone looks away for a brief moment, and when they look back, bam, said person is just gone. Their friends disappeared, and there's no sign of them ever again. It's very strange, but there are cases like this. So with a lack of any leads, some people look at these cases and then just shrug their shoulders and they're like, uh, wormhole? And again, if this plane in the recent sonar images turns out not to be Amelia's plane, this could, in theory, highly speculative theory, mind you, explain why Tony Noonan, Amelia Earhart, and her plane have never been found. Another conspiracy theory is that Amelia Earhart didn't vanish, at least not unintentionally. Instead, she made it look like she disappeared. Now, as for why she would have done this, well, I mentioned in part one that she may have been a spy that needed to go into hiding, but there are other reasons she may have wanted to disappear. The most probable reason, other than the whole spy thing, is that she may have wanted to live a low-key life away from the public eye, so she staged the whole disappearance. As for where she went and what she did, the possibilities are endless, but this is a comforting idea instead of the, unfortunately, more likely outcome that she died soon after her crash landing. Next up, we have the Richard Gillespie hypothesis. Richard Gillespie is a retired pilot, writer, aircraft accident investigator, and founder of the nonprofit organization, the International Group of Historic Aircraft Recovery, or Tiger. And he made an interesting statement after an expedition took place near Nikumararo Island in search of Amelia Earhart's missing plane. The expedition had been carried out by Robert Ballard, a retired Navy officer and professor of oceanography at the University of Rhode Island. This guy was responsible for finding some pretty famous shipwrecks from throughout history, like the Bismarck and the Titanic. So for how experienced and knowledgeable this guy is in underwater archeology, span how was he never able to find the wreck of Amelia Earhart's plane? If you're thinking he just never tried, you'd be wrong. Ballard spent a lot of time and effort on the Earhart case. His expedition around Nikumararo Island came up empty-handed, and Gillespie wasn't surprised. He described Earhart's plane as being very delicate and that it was likely destroyed, getting reduced to pieces of aluminum, stating, quote, it's been 82 years and those small pieces have been scattered and grown over or possibly buried in underwater landslides. End quote. So, yeah, that would make finding the aircraft a damn near impossible task. Next up, we have a story from Reddit. Now, this has to be taken with a grain of salt, but it goes back to a pretty common conspiracy theory that Amelia Earhart may have assumed a new identity. The Reddit post goes as follows. My grandma swore she knew a lady who looked just like Amelia Earhart. My grandma used to tell me about this lady she knew back in the day, and according to her, this woman looked so much like Amelia Earhart, same jawline, same hairstyle, the whole deal. This lady who called herself Jane apparently wasn't keen on talking about her past either. My grandma being this curious type would always try to pry her a bit, but Jane would always change the subject whenever questions came up about where she came from and what brought her to this quiet town. Grandma always had this theory that maybe Amelia Earhart assumed a new identity to escape the limelight. Fast forward a few years and Jane just up and vanishes from town. No goodbyes, no forwarding address, just gone. Next up, we have another common conspiracy theory in regards to Amelia Earhart's disappearance, that she and Fred Noonan were abducted by aliens. Yes, it sounds completely insane, but aliens come up a lot, not just in the case of Earhart, but whenever planes mysteriously vanish. I mean, they're flying up in the air right where UFOs are said to be spotted, so. I guess I see the connection. This conspiracy was well established enough that Star Trek Voyager had a whole episode about it. And if something happens in Star Trek, I mean, it has to be real, right? So look, did I put this alien thing on here just as an excuse to talk about Star Trek on this channel? Uh, yes. I very much did. So in season two, episode one of Star Trek Voyager entitled The 37s, the crew of the Voyager receives an ancient SOS transmission. They come across a class L planet and decide to investigate. On this planet, Captain Janeway comes across an old plane and guess what it is? A Lockheed 10 Electra. 
That's what had sent out the SOS signal. Chakotay, he's off with his own team, which Janeway joins up with later on, and they discover a bunch of humans preserved in cryostasis, including Fred Noonan and Amelia Earhart. They've been abducted by the Briori, but of course, as we all know, these aliens only showed up one time in Star Trek this episode, as they're from the Delta Quadrant, 70,000 light years from Earth. Voyager are encountering all kinds of weird species out there. And finally, we have the Bevington image. This is actually pretty fascinating. The Bevington image is a photograph taken by British colonial officer Eric Bevington on the island of Nicomororo in 1937. So you see that little thing in the distance poking out of the water? Well, it may not look like much, but this photo became pretty famous because some people believed it showed a part of Amelia Earhart's missing plane, including Robert Ballard, who I discussed earlier. This photo is what inspired him to actually set out on his expedition to find Earhart's plane. So Nicomororo is one of the places where some theories suggest Earhart might have landed after her plane disappeared. And when this blurry object sticking out of the water near the island's shore was enhanced, some believed it looked a lot like the landing gear of Earhart's plane. The idea is that her plane might have crash landed in the shallow waters around the island. Now, some experts argue that the object in this photo could be a number of things, like a reef or even just a wave. So it's not universally accepted as evidence of Earhart's plane being there. Now, what do you guys all think about this whole situation? Do you think the plane has been found? Do you think something else happened to her? Let us know down in the comments. I've been your host, James, and I'll catch you, yes, you specifically, in the next video. <music>